Here we go. Hi, this is Gail Davis with the Endless Mountains Empowerment Summit for Women coming to you with 21 days of virtual empowerment. I am just tickled pink. I am so blessed today that I have so many of my entrepreneurial sister friends here joining us. And today's topic is is success for entrepreneurs. And we're gonna be talking about your mindset because it really starts with your mind. But before we begin with getting into the meat of today's discussion, I've asked my friends just to join me in my living room as you're joining me right now. You might be in your bedroom. You might be in your study or library. You might be on your cell phone. But just to join me and share who they are, because the fun part is many of them have never met before. So I'm going to call on one by one. If you could just share who you are and basically talk, we're talking about entrepreneurs. So why are you an entrepreneur or what type of entrepreneur are you? And I see that Kelly is unmuted. So Kelly, I'm going to call upon you first. Introduce yourself to your sisters. Hi, my name is Kelly Golden. And I am an entrepreneur because I love having not only the control, but the responsibility of maintaining and managing my own destiny, my own income, and uh, the work that I do. Uh, the work that I do is I am a Pinterest marketing specialist. I am a content marketing uh, strategist, and I'm also a graphic designer, and I primarily work with uh, women-led uh, small businesses, as well as women entrepreneurs, uh, focusing primarily on coaches. Excellent. Hey, thank you so much, Kelly. And I'm going to ask Joanne to introduce herself because I don't see any kids right now in the background. So Joanne's at home with her children. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. Joanne, who are you? Hi, um, I'm Joanne Civiletto, and I am a mom primarily, but I'm also a coach. I help caregivers to ditch overwhelm for good, and I've been coaching for 20 years, helping individuals uh, improve their lives and their, um, their uh, circumstances from the inside out. So I'm an entrepreneur because I have to be. <laughs> um, I have three kids. Um, and I do have a job, but I, um, I've recently jumped into um, trying to build my coaching into full time because I feel compelled that what I have to share is important enough to, um, to take that leap. And I, um, I love to coach and I, I really, um, I just have to be, I don't know, does anybody resonate with that? Um, <laughs> So, uh, and I, I love coaching and I love being, having the freedom to work with people the way that I desire. Um, and I love the opportunity that it presents to me and my family. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joanne, for joining us today. Now, Dana, you're calling in from where and who are you? Hi, Gail and my friends. I am Dana Wolf, and I am coming to you from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina where I have recently launched a financial coaching business here. I've been in finances for the majority of my life and I started thinking about this about a year and ago of how I could help other people when I retired and I moved south. And um, it was just God calling me to help other people get out of debt, to understand the value of money, um, the relationship of being a good steward and controlling your finances. Um, so here I am in South Carolina and ready to help anybody that needs help. And the beauty of being an entrepreneur is you can do it any place in this country. Awesome, Dana, thank you, thank you. How about Laura? Hi, I am Laura Marcella. I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran and that really led me into being an entrepreneur because I really like having a lot of control over my life and I like designing things and being creative and I wanted an outlet for me to be able to do that. So being an entrepreneur is perfect. I'm also a homeschooling mom of three kids who are on their fourth language. And so as an entrepreneur, I'm teaching a lot of different things. I teach parents how to do well with their kids at home. And, and I also teach coaches. I'm actually a success coach and speaker. So I help people 
go from where they are to where they want to be just by creating a strategic plan that they can start implementing right away. Because as my Marine Corps background, I like immediate results. And that helps my clients really stay in for the long haul as well. Thank you, Laura. Carrie, it's your turn. <laughs> it's my turn. I am Carrie Veracchio. I'm coming to you from New York. And I am an entrepreneur because it's my blood type. I, people ask me often what my blood type is, it's entrepreneur. I can't not be. I've tried, I've tried the corporate world and I just felt like I was in a cage. I had to be my own boss. I had to do it myself. It's what my dad did and I had a good teacher. So I went for it. I am an empowerment coach and speaker and author, primarily for women over 40 who have forgotten how to dream. They, they wake up in the morning they look at themselves and they don't know who they are anymore. And I help them step into the big life that has always been theirs. And it is my passion. I love it. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, Jamie, and where are you calling in from? Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Garrow. I live in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which is um, right outside of Philadelphia. And I am a leadership development consultant and an educator. So I kind of live in both the organizational world with my clients, and then I live in the academic world as well, um, teaching leadership and management development for um, undergrads and graduate students. Um, why I'm an entrepreneur, um, I can relate to what Carrie's saying, that I um, lived in the corporate world and it was very a very deliberate process to learn what I needed to learn, to gain the skills and the um, credibility, I guess, so to speak, to be able to be on my own doing the work that I knew was inside of me. Um, so my work focuses now on creating customized leadership development programs for organizations. I work with um, nonprofit and profit organizations doing that and um, also creating succession management programs. Um, I come, my roots are in positive psychology, um, resiliency, grit, growth mindset, all of those types of things. And that's the cornerstone to pretty much all of the programs that I develop. Um, it also translates directly to my classrooms. Um, so I'm excited to be able to work with the undergraduate population and kind of get them when they're young. And, um, and a lot of my students are business students. So it's very important to me to be able to bring those skills to um, that population as they're forging out into the world. Awesome. Well, we've got a great panel and what we're going to be doing for the next 20 or so minutes is just talking about what it means to be an entrepreneur, especially in light of mindset. So the first topic I'd like to throw out is success starts with your mind. And I'm sure you've all heard it. You're six inches away from success. And I thought that that's an interesting concept. But when you really think about it, six inches from ear to ear really is your brain, that it all starts in your mind. And you need to believe you will succeed. And you will. So does anybody want to talk about your mindset and introduce us to believing that it's possible? Do we have any takers here? Go ahead, Jamie. Okay, so I'll jump in on this because this is something I talk about a lot um, in the, the mindset and believing that you can do something is the first step to doing it. <clears throat> and one of the big things for me is that my upbringing, my background, um, I always kind of say that I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing today based on where I came from. Um, but it all started because I believed in myself and I believed in my, my capabilities and what I could do. And nothing stood in my way, that I pushed through <clears throat> kind of some of those the tumultuous things that I've been through in my life to really become who I am today and to really inform that. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I would definitely agree that mindset is everything, um, which is why the core of pretty much all that I do is growth mindset because you have to believe it in order to achieve it. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it's so true. <laughs> Excellent. You have to believe it. And I know Joanne wanted to say something and then we'll do Laura. So go ahead, Joanne. I, I, I really just want to add to that by saying that the, that it is truly, um, uh, it's about removing the limiting beliefs that you may uh, carry forward. Uh, so it's not just having the right, the right attitude. It's, it's actually about some uh, subconscious beliefs that, um, that um, we may bring forward from Oh, all kinds of experiences or our, our, our upbringing or uh, so, so it's, it's got to be a conscious choice. Um, so, and, and it, there's a little bit of work involved in it, 
but in reality, mindset is really about releasing um, things that hold us back and embracing those things that we, uh, those uh, ideas, concepts, that, that value, that personal worth that we need to function forward and to, and to actually leap into our life and our value and our purpose. So it's a lot about purpose and a lot about releasing some, some old stuff. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. And I know Laura wanted to say something on this topic and this is right up your alley, right girl? Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to add to what Jamie and Joanne were saying. And I love what they're saying. And, you know, with the success, everybody sees all, you know, success habits, like, you know, what are the habits to be successful? And everybody's focused on the habits. And then we always know that, first of all, it's really hard to change habits. And then once you haven't changed your habit, if you do something for 30 days, you suppose we have a new habit, but as soon as you stop, you're right back to the same, to the same picture. So when we think about well, why does everything look the same? The, the physical manifestation of everything comes from our identity. So you can change your habits, but as soon as you stop doing that, your brain is going to take you right back to where you were. So identity, what you see yourself as, is actually where your habits are born from. That's actually where your beliefs are born from too. A lot of times people work on the self-limiting beliefs. And, and I love how Joanne mentioned releasing because it's this is a big process about unlearning a lot of stuff <laughs> and getting back to center. But it's really about um, instead of trying to like go against the habits and go against the beliefs, let's just go to the root of it. Let's go to the core and let's see, well, who do I think I am for me to behave this way and believe this? So my identity comes first then my, then my beliefs and then, and then my habits. So when we change our identity, all of those things kind of align themselves with what you think of yourself. Excellent. Thank you, Laura. And along those lines too, the self-talk, what is going on? What are you saying? When I first became an entrepreneur, my mother told me, you're not going to make any money. I did Avon and all I made was $16. You're not going to make any money. So for me, I'm thinking I'm not going to make any money. And I was also working for my brother at the time. And he was a, a Marine, uh, a former Marine, Laura. And so I know what Marines go through. So he had been a sergeant in the Marine Reserves and he was calling me a pea brain. So my mother told me, you're not going to make any money if you're an entrepreneur. I'm working for my brother and he's telling me I'm a pea brain. So what can be going on in my mind? You can only imagine. So I had to work on my self-talk that, yes, I'm going to be successful. Yes, I am going to do this. I'm going to show people. And I had to see myself, feel it, touch it, taste it, smell it and talk myself into believing it. Does anybody want to talk about self-talk in their own business? Go ahead, Kelly. One of my favorite quotes, and it's actually on my personal Facebook page right now, and I'm going to uh, paraphrase it because I don't know it by heart exactly, but it is essentially uh, to anybody who says that you can't do something, show them, do it twice, and take pictures. <laughs> in your face right i love yeah, it exactly okay. exactly okay. and uh gail i mean i had uh and still have <laughs> um some of the same experiences you know i come from families who are very hard workers and have been had their own a, a certain amount of expertise but none of them have the entrepreneurial mindset whatsoever and that's fine but I do and have been uh, taking that on and I have had some failures and that's okay. I believe that uh, if you treat failure as a feedback and learn from it and move on um, all the wiser, then you're going to have the right kind of mindset to tackle not only the naysayers, but also what you're, what you're going to be hearing in your own mind. Well, maybe they were right. Well, maybe I don't belong here. Maybe this was the wrong thing to do. Maybe I should play it safe. Maybe and I'm an imposter. Exactly. Maybe I'm not qualified. And those kinds of things are loud sometimes. But if you have figured out what it is that you want, then you're going to figure out a way to do it. 
and believing in yourself and surrounding yourself with people who believe in you is one of the best things that I think that you can do to squelch that negative self-talk. Excellent. Thank you, Kelly. And I, I know that Carrie wanted to say something. Did you want to say something? I, and then I Dana, do. we're going to come to you as we hit the next topic here. I am not forgetting you, Dana. Go ahead, Carrie. <laughs> so with the self-talk, when I, I went into corporate America, I thought that was what I suppo was supposed to do. I did all the, all the stuff, right? But when I wanted to do my own thing, I, I can remember calling my dad because I watched my dad go through the same process and he was very, very successful. When he stepped into his own power, he was extremely successful. And so I called him and, and I still, even though he's gone now, I still talk to him all the time because he gives great advice still. And I said to him, dad, I want to do this. Should I do this? And he sat back and he always had his Navy hat on and he kind of sat back and he crossed his arms. And he goes, well, that depends. Do you believe in yourself? Because if you believe in yourself, go for it. If you have doubt, then don't. You're not ready. And I said, well, I believe in myself. He goes, well, I believe in you too. Go for it. And, and it was just that that made me take that step. And when I, I mean, when I put my nose to the grindstone, grindstone his, his Navy hat's on my head because it just helps me remember that conversation. Do you believe in yourself? Then go for it because it starts there. You will have failures along the way, but like Kelly said, you learn from them and then you tweak it and you try again, but you never lose the belief that this is where you belong. And that is, I've never forgotten that. If you believe in yourself, go for it. If you don't, let's it. work on that mindset and then we'll go for it. So as our viewers are watching this, yes, ladies, go for it believe that you can do it, which goes to the next point that I wanted to make. Quitting is not an option. When I got married, um, I was told by my pastor, divorce was not an option. Unfortunately, a lot of people at circumstances, you can't really say that, but quitting is not an option. Obstacles are an opportunity to grow and look at things from a different perspective. So, Dana, can I call on you? Do you want to talk about quitting and persevering and growing from it? Absolutely, Gail. You know, when you first start out on your business, you're excited and you share it with everybody. And it's the only thing that's on, the, on your mind that you want to talk about. No matter who you see, you're like, oh, I got to share this. I got to share this. And you're excited and you're growing and your business is taking off. And then there might be some obstacles that come along the way. And you start thinking, oh, geez, I can't do this. Nobody wants to work with me. I don't have any sales. Um, what's wrong with me? And, you know, I really think that you have to just take a time out, take a deep breath, think about why you started your business. What was your passion? What was your purpose? What were you excited about? And what were the things that you were doing, the actual physical activities of your business that you were doing that made you so successful? So take a deep breath and start again, because we're all going to face challenges. So we're all going to have hurdles. We're all going to have highs where one month our business is rocking. And then the next month something's happening and people are like, nope, can't buy today. Nope, can't sign up today. Um, so you just have to take it in stride have a nice financial plan um, so that you're not spending all your earnings in one month and the next month not having any. And just take a breath and say, what did I do? Why did I do it? And let's start over. You did it Excellent. once, you can do it again. Excellent. Go ahead, Laura. Talk to me about obstacles or quitting. Yes, I wanted to actually, the word failure has been brought up a couple of times. And I'm really passionate about teaching people how to redefine what that means. So, and, and this is a perfect example. This is plan, what, Gail? This is plan C, right? Plan A, plan B, plan C. This is still, this is the virtual Women's Empowerment Summit. Would you consider the Women's Empowerment Summit a failure because it didn't turn out exactly the way you pictured in the beginning? The answer is probably no. I look at this as a success, right? And as entrepreneurs, we're innovators, we're creative. We say, oh, that road is blocked. Let's take a detour. And just, you know, we talked about the self-talk as well, not say, oh, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. Oh, this failed, this failed, this failed. When in reality, you cannot fail unless you quit. Unless you put your pack down, 
and you're like, white flag, I'm done. It's not a failure and you're not a failure. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead, Joanne. I, the one thing that comes to my mind, um, and this is what I teach my clients, and because they teach a lot about resiliency and overcoming overwhelm, because that's where a lot of people are sitting as they feel it, they're failing, um, is that we, our mindset needs to be, especially as entrepreneurs, looking for the lesson, looking for the opportunity within the, um, the, the bump in the road. Um, failure is, is not even, in fact, there's lots of studies out there. Failure is actually um, a catalyst for success. Um, if you look at Pixar, they're a huge example. They actually have redone multiple movies because they found that they weren't going to, um, they weren't, they didn't feel that they would um, do well with them because there wasn't enough, there weren't enough, uh, there wasn't enough friction or there wasn't enough noise in what they were present and what they were uh, creating. So failure is actually an opportunity for growth. And um, I encourage my clients to look at it from that perspective. When you're struggling, it's a, there's a lesson in there that you can um, springboard from and leap forward with. So I agree with, uh, with Laura and, um, and also with Dana. Failures, it's not that even that it's an option. Failure is not a thing. <laughs> That's what I tell my clients. It's just not a thing. We just get back up. That's what we as women do. That's what we as entrepreneurs do. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And we could spend all day talking about this and we will have a handout to give to the ladies that click on this. They'll be able to see some of our tips for success with the mindset. The third point I wanted to talk about is you need to know what success means to you and define it because my definition of success might be different from yours. And along those lines, I strongly believe that you have to daily look at it, relook at it, visualize it, and taste it. Because you've heard the old phrase, out of sight, out of mind. It's one thing to do goals, resolutions on January 1st. It's another thing to relook at them every single day. So I'd like to talk about what success means and how do you define it? How do you daily look at it? Anybody want to? talk about that. Go ahead, Jamie. You're a success coach. You're a leadership coach. Yes. And one of the things that I do um, is I, I encourage my clients to have their BHAGs, if anybody's heard that term, the big, hairy, audacious goals, right? Those big, it's kind of looking at it as a vision statement, that this is really where I want to go, where I want to be. And then breaking it down from there, assessing our values and seeing how that plays into our goals. <clears throat> excuse me, I keep getting this frog in my throat today. Um, and then um, planning long-term, then medium-term, then short-term, then weekly, monthly, daily, bring it, dropping it all the way down on how we're going to reach those big goals. And <clears throat> I narrowed my BHAGs down to 10. Um, I have 10 big goals that I want to I reach. Um, there's not a de defined timeline per se on those, but I write them down every single day all 10 of them. I just keep rewriting them, rewriting them. And once I achieve them, then I add something else in. Um, and then the other thing I do, if something is no longer resonating for me, where it's like, oh, maybe this isn't something I'm working towards, maybe then I just give myself the freedom to drop that off the list um, and put something in that is resonating for me. I'm not locked into those 10. Um, so that's a a definite reminder of my why, you know, always remembering why, 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 you know, because we always want to know what's in it for us. Excellent, Jamie. Thank you. Big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, Jamie, I'm going to ask you if you could find a sheet that defines what big, hairy, audacious goals is, email it to me so we can add it to this program, because I think that would be good for, for ladies to download. Okay, let's talk about now what success means to you. Anybody want to share what a successful life, what a successful day is, or where are you going with success? I know that that's a broad question, but what does success mean to you? Go ahead, Kelly. So it is a broad, <laughs> it is pretty broad. And I think it's of course subjective because success is going to look different uh, to whoever is deeming it as a success. Uh, I, personally, I consider um, to have had a successful day, um, a successful interaction, successful project, uh, when I've been able to help somebody. 
And I think as entrepreneurs, it is absolutely a mandate that we're in it to help people. Um, and whatever our service or our product um, is that we are providing with people, we're providing benefits um, from the features of whatever those are. And so at the end of the day, whenever it comes down to it, I take a look and see, have I, have I helped somebody? Have my services in particular, have my services been of service to somebody? Have I solved a problem um, for somebody who needed it? And so that, that myself in a, in a very broad way is what I consider to be success. Oh, that's so interesting, Kelly, because I think of Zig Ziglar, who is a great motivational speaker, and he talks about you will have success when you help enough, enough people, other people get what they want. Mm -hmm. And as you're helping other people get what they want and need in life, you will truly be successful. And I think, Laura, you had a, a comment with this. Yes, and I love what you and Kelly just said, and there might be women on here that are watching that maybe because of everything that's going on, maybe they're starting their entrepreneurial journey, and that might sound like a really big bite to take as helping as many people as you can. So the key to success, especially when starting, that that's guaranteed. If you are focused on becoming the best version of yourself, you will in turn, as a byproduct, help the people around you. You'll be like a beacon to all the people that are supposed to hear your message, that are supposed to see. So when you, when you actually turn your life into the inspiration and your business is simply just a vehicle that you share that with others too, that's when things can get really simple and really easy. So just focusing on, okay, I want to help people, but I feel overwhelmed with that. How do I do it? I'm just going to focus on being the best version of myself. And that in turn will help the collective good. Wonderful. Laura, and then, and then we'll move on to the next. Go ahead, Laura. Uh, I'm sorry, not Laura, Joanne. Joanne. Just one thing I want to say about success, and that's that success is driven by each of us individually. But I think um, uh, we can lose sight of success because we are worried about what everybody else thinks. So I just want to mention that um, one of the best steps to success is really not caring about what anybody else thinks. And some days your success is getting out of bed. Um, some days your success is taking one step towards the direction of your goals. Um, and then there are other days where you take these giant leaps. The key is, is that you don't stop, that you don't give up, and that you don't, don't necessarily define your success by comparing yourself with anyone other than yourself, which is what Laura was saying. Um, but taking even just one step forward within a, you know, a measured time frame can be one of our greatest successes, especially if we're coming from a place of adversity. So I just want to make sure that that's, that's on people's minds um, when they think of success. Wonderful. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Uh, Jamie, go ahead, and then we have to move on to the next one. Okay. This is real quick, because I, I just went back to um, kind of when I was thinking through mindset, and you just touched on it, that small steps lead to big goals, right? Being consistent, focused on taking small, measurable steps every single day, no matter how tiny that step is. Maybe it's one email. Maybe it's one phone call or one text message, but taking small steps can help us get to those big goals. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Lastly, your brain is a muscle that needs exercising. And I don't know how everybody's exercising right now. I know we have a Marine on this call, so I'm sure she's, she's working on her boot camp. But, but we need to exercise our brain on a regular basis and train our brain. So who wants to address ways that they work on exercising the brain? Go ahead, Carrie. The passion of mine. I have time set aside every single day to dig deep on a subject. Right now, I am working on money mindset. So I took Darren Hardy's advice, five books, three audios, and an online course. And I am digging deep into it to keep my brain going, going, going on that subject. I'm also working on leadership with another group. 
And I have my books laid out. I have my time laid out that I am digging deep into that so that I'm keeping my brain constantly learning, constantly growing, just constantly putting something in so that I can learn. And I'm not saying everything that I read, I agree with, but I'm bringing it all in. And then I can discern where I'm going to take it from there to best serve my clients and the women that I'm leading. So it, it is a constant every day. It's a non-negotiable. I have my time. And, and my whole family knows that if the door is closed, you don't bother because I'm studying, working that brain muscle and getting it going. <laughs> I think that's excellent, Carrie. And it's funny that you're saying you're reading because one of the books I'm reading right now is Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And then I picked up another book that's been on my shelf and I had to dust it off, Hind's Feet on High Places. And it's a spiritual allegory about the peaks and the valleys and the dips that we have to go through in life. So leaders are readers. Entrepreneurs have to constantly skill up. And did I see Dana raise her hand? Did you want to talk about this, Dana? How do you, how do you develop a growth mindset? How do you exercise your brain? I just wanted to add on to what Carrie was saying. Um, our thoughts control our actions. And we know that. Um, and one of the things that I like to do every morning before I get out of bed, have that moment um, of solitude and I am after I've done my morning prayers I say to myself I am successful I am I am I am not I will be but I am and I believe in the law of attraction um, you ever thought about geez I want to go buy a car and I want a red car and then all of a sudden you see all these red cars out there what your thoughts are here manifest itself into reality and so if you're waking up in the morning and you're saying, I am successful, I will help people today. I'm going to have three new clients. I'm going to have three new customers by the end of the week or three new orders. You're putting it out there into the universe. And it, two parts. Number one, you're opening up yourself to share with others because you know you're going to do it. So you just automatically do it and you're not afraid to try. And then the other part of it is, you're successful and you're glowing and people are looking at you and they're saying, geez, what has she got? Because I want what she's got. So I do think that, you know, every morning your thoughts are going to control your actions. So before you get out of bed, think about what it is you want to accomplish and say it and then do it. Mm, I like that. I like that. So entrepreneurs have a growth mindset that we're continually training our brain, absorbing, feeding. We're feasting on these banquets of healthy food. We're not, we're not gluttons for unhealthy stuff. And along those lines, as we're training and retraining our brain, we're becoming bigger, better, more successful. And people see that and want to do business with us. Does anybody want to give some closing comments as we wrap this up? Anything else that we didn't talk about that you'd like to leave our viewers with? Go ahead, Laura. Uh, yes, um, and this is actually uh, picking up on what Dana just said. I, I love her energy and you can see her energy right as she's talking And you about all have that. great energy today. This is <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes. Um, that there's 24 hours in a day. And so when you take 24 hours and you break them down and, and say, what am I doing first thing in the morning? And Dana, she gave a, a perfect example of what she does in the morning and everybody should be having, should have some kind of practice like that in the morning. But the rest of the entire day, there's 24 hours in a day, the millionaire and the beggar both have the same amount of time in a day. So what, what are they doing differently than you're doing? What are you doing with every moment of your day? And I call this system flooding. So I believe it was Carrie that was talking about this too, that she's studying. She's constantly exercising that brain of hers, which is amazing. And also it's about flooding. What am I watching? What am I listening to? What am I speaking? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Flooding all of your senses, your systems on, on one direction and stay in that direction long enough to actually see the manifestations come through. And there might be a lot of people watching this that love the law of attraction and are into manifesting and might know how to do that. And going to the next stage, the next step is surrendering. So asking those empowering questions. You've got the statements, the I am statements, you know, I am successful. But then what after that? You reach all your success and then what? 
you've got the surrender stage where you can ask empowering questions. What is my assignment for today? And this is really a meditative practice where you ask and you're quiet. You listen with that, that inner ear. What's my assignment today? How can I help more people in a bigger way? What's the next problem for me to solve? And you mentioned Zig Ziglar, you know, the more people you help, the more successful you be. This is where you can really step into alignment with a soul purpose, especially if you believe that uh, you can manifest anything you want in your life. But if you believe that God specifically sent you here to do something divine, you can tap into asking what that actually is. We can manifest all the houses, all the money, all the cars, all the relationships, everything that we want. And then get all those things and realize, huh, I'm still not as fulfilled as I thought I would be. So you could step into really asking and sourcing, what's my assignment today? What, what, what way am I here? Who am I here to help? And in what way am I here to help them? And tapping into that. And then, you know, as Dana was talking about, just basically being that, that beacon, that law of attraction, but you're coming from an inspired place of action and allowing God to actually use you as a vessel and manifest things in, in a way that you really came here to be. So I just wanted to add that in case there was somebody that was like, well, what's after manifesting? What, what after, what if you already have all the success, then what, what's next? And that's hopefully helpful. Thank you so much. And I know time has run out, but we have a part B. Uh, this is a two-parter for those that are watching. So log on, log back to see part two on best business practices. So thank you ladies for joining me. This is Gail Davis with 21 Days of Virtual Empowerment. Thank you so much.